let's have a look in a sprite at color quantization and palette generation so i've opened up my uh, test image here of this lamborghini what i'm going to do is i'll generate a new palette on the sprite let's give it a 16 color palette and i'll just sort it by hue so it looks neat um, and the nice thing about a sprite is the palettes that we generate and the quantization of the image are separate so i can generate a palette for an rgb image and it'll still be rgb and then i can use color mode more options and i can choose the dither technique that i want to use to reduce it so if i choose no dithering i get a very obviously banded image here If I choose an ordered dither matrix, I can get um, an ordered dither along the the borders between the the solid otherwise solid color areas. Or I could choose larger and larger Bayer dither matrices. But I can also choose Floyd Steinberg and do an error diffuse dither. But if this is at its maximum level you get quite a grainy image always a problem with dispersed dot dithers but the nice thing about this is i can put down the dither level and i can try and find a nice balance for my pixel art at the point where the image doesn't have quite hard edges those edges are broken up and the dot dither disperses the hard edge to a nice level. Now the level I choose here, the amount, um, will influence a different amount depending on the scale of the image. So if I just knock this back off and shrink the image down, let's reduce it by 25%. Zoom in again. Layer, uh, not layer. Sprite, more options. Now, the dither here, it's having a much bigger effect because it covers a much bigger relative area. So if I knock it down to something like, let's have a look at maybe 60%, 60%. I won't get something that's super grainy like this, but I might get something that's sufficiently well dithered to work with. Um, that seems a bit banded. Yeah, so like this level here, 62, 63. Uh, let's look at it on the preview. It looks pretty decent to me. And it's a nice basis to carry on with my pixel art at this point. I've got something which has got the, the dither dispersed well across the surface of the object. Um, it's reduced down to 16 colors as well. Now the other thing I can do Let's start again from scratch, open the Lambo back up, is influence the palette. So let's reduce it down to 16 colors again, sort again, but let's say I want a red in there because I've got no red. Um, let me see, so I've got a cluster of yellows, cluster of greens, and then some grays. So I've got quite a few grays, so maybe I could sacrifice a gray or one of the greens because the greens will come from all this foliage in the background, which I'm not too interested in. I'm just interested in the car. So maybe let's try and find one with a similar intensity. So this and this are quite similar. So we'll play, uh, so play brightness. Boom, boom, boom. I think one of these greens could go. Right, let's knock that one out. So let's just edit the palette. And let's just pick this red here. So now I'm going to shrink the image down 25% and then I can dither it again. Now that red that I've chosen has been used for these red areas at the back. I can play with the dither settings. Hey presto, I've got some red in the image. 
Now I would normally iterate this back and forth, back and forth, choosing different colors until I'd use the combination of automatic generation of the palette plus manually chosen colors in combination with the color mode reduction. 